We have a special guest for this week's edition of The Bottom Line, Jacob Barker, my colleague, uh, business reporter at the Post-Dispatch. Jacob, you were at uh, President Trump's speech in Granite City. Uh, I assume at the steel plant he got a pretty receptive audience for uh, his talk about steel tariffs and uh, what they're doing yeah, for the economy. Yeah, most, most definitely. I mean, well, the the rally at the steel plant, they were mostly uh, invited supporters, but uh, I went in on the on the motorcade through the town and I'd say 80, at least 80 percent, if not more, of uh, people lying in the street along uh, the motorcade route were mostly supporters. There were a few protesters, but I mean that town is pretty much revolves around the steel plant, so they're pretty thrilled to have the uh, the tariffs uh, boost the price of steel and get the uh, the blast furnaces back. You've got about 800 jobs uh Returned there, give, you know, give or take. Um, uh, I think there's still a couple hundred more they got to hire while they're they're still getting the second blast furnace up and running. That should be up and running by October, mm -hmm. is what U.S. Steel says. Mm -hmm. um, and when they made that announcement, they said that would add another 300 jobs, and that okay. was about uh, a month or two ago. So they're they're back over a thousand jobs or so, probably at about 1,200 or so. They expect to be up to about 1,500 jobs. And they, and they were and that was down to just a couple hundred when, when it was virtually shut down yeah. a year, year and a half ago. I, I mean, I think in, in 2016, the, the city says the lowest it ever got was about, uh, never completely idle, but it got down yeah. to about 100 jobs or so. Um, I believe the, the announcement that they were going to idle the blast furnaces was at the end of 2015. Um, got down as low as 100 jobs. It, it started to build back up uh, as time progressed, though. They started finishing uh, steel made elsewhere there. Uh -huh. They got up to about uh -huh. 700 or so jobs. And then the tariffs were announced uh, in February. And pretty soon after that, about a week later, U.S. Steel said they're going to get the, uh, the blast furnace back right. going and start making uh, raw steel there. And the yeah. company's CEO was at the rally. He's been talking about really uh, bright earnings prospects. Um, yeah, Lo I mean, lo he, you know, he, he loves what the tariffs are doing for, it, for him. He said it's it's pretty much turned around. Uh, the you know helped turn around the company and things are looking good. He was he was very um, thankful to to President Trump and made sure to go out of his way to say thank you for everything you've done for the company and um, yeah, you can tell they're they're pretty happy with with this administration's policy. Of course, uh, the the steel industry's customers are not so happy. Whirlpool has been talking about, you know, huge cost increases for the, the metal that goes into their appliances, for which they just got their own tariff protection earlier this year. Caterpillar has been, been complaining about the cost of the steel to make its heavy equipment, and they're, they're worried that they'll lose market share to foreign competitors. We've got the nail plant in southeast Missouri that's, uh, that, that's struggling, laying off workers. I talked to Laclede Chain, which is a small company out in out in Fenton, uh, they're they're very worried. They compete, you know, they compete with a chain that's made in in Asia, and they don't they don't have to worry about the steel tariffs. They've got access to low cost steel. Mm -hmm. So there are yeah there are benefits in Granite City, but there are there are costs elsewhere in the economy. Yeah, I mean, is there any sense? Don't, don't most economists say? I mean, there, there's a lot more buyers of steel than there are steel yes, makers, yeah. right? Yeah, that's why it was you know it was a mystery to some economists why. The first uh, big target in Trump's uh, trade war was a, you know, essentially an, an, an input to to other manufactured goods. Since the you know, the steel and aluminum are big uh, cost for the auto industry, appliances and uh, many many other things. Yeah, and out, outside of the metal market, I mean, President Trump even addressed this during his during his speech. Uh, is is the farm economy yeah. and uh, yeah. soybean farmers, uh, particularly who are who are really worried about losing access to uh, the Chinese market from foreign competitors who don't have to deal with the the retaliatory tariffs. And and President right. Trump made a point of bringing this up, and and basically his point was that. Uh, farmers understand it's going to be a little tough for a while, but uh, they stand with me and uh, understand that this is necessary uh, in order to, to win some concessions from, from China on uh, intellectual property issues that, that uh, are pretty well documented. Well, you will, yeah, we'll see. Those, those, those pox are, are ongoing and, uh, you know, we haven't won any concessions yet. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll hope that that's the outcome. Right, right. 